Before we begin, I want to mention that I already did a breakdown on the new incredible intro, so check that video out if you missed it, as I won't be discussing the opening theme in this video. Now, before episode 3 and 4 come out, let's discuss episode 2 titled Simon Petrikov. The cold open places us back in time with Simon and Marcy during the aftermath of the Mushroom War. Simon jokes about having a squirrel army to comfort Marcy. And trained squirrels to tend to your every need. And I have to wonder if those squirrely sorts of thoughts existing in Simon's head are behind LSP's squirrel friends in the first episode, or if that was merely coincidence. Stranger! Get her, boys! Eat her face! At two, Stanley! Simon's flashback with Marcy establishes the question at the center of Simon's existential depression in this titular episode. What would I do without you? That was something even past Simon had difficulty answering when being Marcy's guardian was basically his sole identity. As for me, I'd, uh, I do In the present time, this question predominantly harks to Betty's absence, who has presumably permanently severed the potential to ever be with Simon. Forever she will languish, while you wallow in anguish. Beyond the hole left in Simon's heart by Betty, Marceline herself has already grown up hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and she currently has her own life outside of Simon, which Simon doesn't want to infringe too much upon. Marcy seems consistently happy for the first time in so long, and Simon doesn't want his troubles to drag her down now that she's finally enjoying life. Have you talked to Marcy about any of this? Nah, I, I didn't want to freak her out. As a quick tangent, the tattoo scene with Marcy and Bonnabelle was unadulterated hilarity. Yubi's arm is gumming up the machine! <laughs> and it's hilarious! <laughs> 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 I couldn't get enough of them unintentionally trolling the tattoo parlor, though I did feel bad for that spider wasting his valuable time only to get his tools all gummed up. So back to talking about our lovable and relatable depressed normie Simon Petrikov. Well, he's at least relatable to anyone who's had to figure out what to do with their life after investing a lot of time in a direction that stops being feasible. Simon's main crisis is one of shedding past identities and having no new ones to fill the gaps with, something that can cut surprisingly deep at your mental well-being. Simon has a few friends and even loved ones, but he has not been open about his feelings and thoughts to them up to this episode. Everything's fine. Same old, same old. Simon doesn't feel like he has a community or a place he truly belongs. Simon doesn't feel at home in the Land of Ooh. The magical world has become mundane and maddening. Having only cheers on TV while living in a human zoo will do that to a feller. Hell, if I had to have those grateful and such signs in my home, I'd also want to perform an evil ritual. For people with depression, merely existing often feels like a job. It can be hard to find the energy and focus to do simple chores. For Simon, doing household chores is literally his job. The dude has to put on a facade of living a so-called normal life in the 20th century while he desires to have an actual life that he could consider normal by his 20th century standards, which was in contrast to Fiona's wish for her life to be more magical. I really liked how this aspect of Simon's day-to-day -day life was portrayed, even though I felt really bad that the guy couldn't find a way to incorporate his antiquarian job of old with the modern land of Ooh. It's interesting that Fiona's routine is actually synced up with Simon's between the two episodes. They both awake to cheers, go to work where they're expected to put on a mask for the sake of others, get a drink and chat with friends, and then go into a forest where a friend fails to help them with their problem. Fiona and Simon are obviously thematically linked in their depression, but the structures of their respective episodes also mirror each other, which was neat. So, back in part one of my Together Again review, I had mused about missing the Ice King in the continuations of Adventure Time. I can't help but miss the wacky antics of that deranged magical troublemaker. I guess I'm not the only one who was missing the Ice King's mischief. There are dozens of us. He used to be a really cool ice wizard who wrote my favorite book series, but then his girlfriend or fiance or something did something bonkers and turned him into a boring sad guy. You know what? Good on you for making that kid cry, Simon. At least I never liked the Ice King for his fanfictions. Turns out pretty much everybody else did, though. 
Yeah, Jake loved them. Yeah, he's the one who convinced us they were good. Honestly, I like them better than Finn and Dad. Woof. Another theme behind Simon's melancholy is that of artists growing beyond their old work. Simon wishes to have no association with his past creative output as Ice King, but that work is already out there, and Simon can't erase the cultural footprint it left behind. It seems like residents of Ooh who recognize Simon associate him with Fiona and Cake first and foremost, and secondarily as the former Ice King, with his current identity, or lack thereof, falling to the wayside. But it turns out that the person who misses Ice King the most might just be Simon himself. Sometimes I used to dress up like Ice King. After I became me again. I guess I missed being him, in a way. Simon misses that naive and magical stupor. While the Ice King was often sad and miserable, there definitely was an element of ignorance is bliss to Ice King's personality, and he often quickly bounced back from setbacks, or just forgot about them. Why? 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 Oh well. Gunter, dispose of Finn's carcass. I featured the following joke multiple times in my previous videos because I found it so humorous. Ah! What? This is how I cope! But this joke does take on a far more somber layer of context, now that we see how much conflict and pain is behind Simon's compulsion to slip back into the blue moo moo. In the episode Betty, Simon had said the following. I don't want to be the Ice King again. It's like living with eternal diaper butt. I can't do it! I guess the grass was greener on the other side, because now Simon thinks diaper butt may have sometimes been worth it to not be aware of all that he has lost. The following is another scene from Betty that might now have new context. You're gonna be the Ice King till the sun blows up. This is your one chance. Maybe old death wasn't wrong in his claim, but rather he was talking in a metaphorical sense. This internal conflict Simon finds himself struggling with is brilliantly captured by Rebecca Sugar's song, Part of the Madness. It's a forlorn, catchy melody that captures the loneliness and isolation Simon has been feeling for years. Another great song under Adventure Time's belt. Alright, I've featured him in the review already, but I haven't said his name yet, so let's finally talk about none other than... Choose Goose! You belong in the trash with Fiona and Cake! I'm kidding around, but it was such a blast to spot evil Choose Goose, who survived at the Icor of Kokontepi in the Distant Land special Wizard City. It was neat to spot him before Simon actually pulled the sheet off his cage, and I loved the development that his rhyming trash mouth is the reason Fiona and Cake get injected into Simon's ritual. But yes, let's finally talk about Finn motherfucking Mertens. You know how it's stereotypical advice to work out when you're depressed or when you experience grief? Finn took that to fucking heart at some point after Jake's death. Dude got jacked! I'd claim my boy was on steroids if this wasn't a magical cartoon universe, and if Finn wasn't one to get stuck in non-stop loops of grinding dungeons and dangers when his emotional state is less than stable. I love how Finn seems to be taking each of Jake's kids on adventures with him after the death of his brother, though I feel like his rationale for doing so is due to the fear that his nieces and nephews might die before he ever gets around to spending quality time with them, but it's still just so many fun potential dynamics to think about. I'm amazed TV ever agreed to it, honestly, but older TV seems a lot more chill than before. Finn comes off as getting by on the surface, but he's a tad rough underneath. Obviously, he's got trauma, or perhaps even PTSD, at the core of his being, despite him trying to keep up a cheerful and carefree exterior and live the best life that he can. I'd say the gun-ho, go-go-go attitude is one of the ways he's dealing with suppressing his grief about Jake's passing, but this probably ain't healthy for Finn. I mean, come on, it definitely ain't healthy. And it is definitely not helping Simon. Yeah, Finn gives Simon some terrible advice in this episode. Talking about sad stuff gets you nowhere. Forget about it. And he gives himself terrible advice too. Yeah, Finn. Just keep him busy and everything will be fine. Finn also retains his subtle jerk-ass component into adulthood because he used Simon to lure out a monster without even telling the guy. 
Good job, Bait. Feel better yet? Unsurprisingly, all the trip into the forest accomplished was to push Simon further away. It'll take you back to where you want to be. Yeah, right. Where I want to be. I mean, it also got Simon pretty badly injured. The violence was interesting because it didn't feel that extreme or shocking to me, but it was still something Adventure Time couldn't get away with before. So it was fine, but also felt kind of unnecessary to me. Even in Season 1, Adventure Time was already achieving comparable levels of violence in how it depicted bruising, for example. So I don't need the blood, but I also don't mind the blood. I'll say this, the level of violence was substantially below that of Infinity Train, which was rated TVPG compared to TV14 for Fiona and Cake. Find ways to watch Infinity Train, y'all, because it's great, and it was pulled from HBO Max due to a corporate merger that placed new idiotic executives at the helm. Go watch Infinity Train. Getting back to Adventure Time, though, I simply want to stress that I absolutely loved the camping trip Finn and Simon took, and the dynamic the two share, even though it's not exactly healthy for either of them. So that's what cowboy tastes like. I adored the callbacks to the Hall of Egress, with Finn blindfolding both himself and Simon so that fate can take them where it will, I guess. Dude is taking the lesson he learned way back when far too literally, but it was hilarious. And of course, Finn confirming that he spends time with Huntress Wizard was also great. The whole episode was friggin' great. I could keep on gushing about this episode and finding topics and details to discuss ad infinitum, but then this video would never get released. So I'm gonna have to end things here, folks. The episode Simon Petrikov was such a spectacular way to follow up on the fantastic first episode, and I'm so glad that even way after the main series had concluded, Adventure Time continues to blow me away. The next two episodes are on the horizon, and I hope you join me when I review them. Catch ya on the flip.